You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Doug Nation, how you doing? Uh, this is Clint, Locked On Bulldogs, here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Glad to be back. We are talking... National Signing Day. Yes, we had one National Signing Day. We have part two or part three or whatever part it is. I have no idea at this point. Nobody does. But more recruits signed with Georgia. We're talking about that. Uh, Glad you're with us today. If you're on the audio side, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you get your audio podcast downloaded, download there. Glad that you found us. Five star rating and review helps us out, helps other people out. If you're on YouTube with us, how y'all doing? Hit that notification, hit that subscribe button, comment down below. We love interacting with you guys. And also get over onto the Twitter machine, uh, email us. All that is in the show notes. You can find all of that. Get in contact with us. Love interacting with y'all. Today, we are talking recruits. We be recruiting all the time, every time, everywhere, every place there is somebody that's got talent that can help out the dogs. Kirby and the boys are going to be there. We're going to talk about the new guys on board that just signed today. Uh, Not a lot of surprises, which is actually good. I think this is really, really awesome to see from UGA. We are now to the point where um, people know what to expect when we sign, who we're going to sign, who we're bringing in. But before I do all that, we're going to break down specific players. I need to talk to you about Ratings and recruits, because I think there's a lot of misconception about ratings and recruits and how recruiting works. So let me explain to you a little bit of what it means before we talk about all these players, uh, the Christian Miller, Darius Smith, Dylan Bell, uh, as well as uh, EJ Lightsey and um, Andrew Paul, which, whoo, whoo, y'all. Andrew Paul. Hello. Uh, We're going to talk about that. But first, I need to talk to you about recruits. When you look at a recruit and it says five star, four star, three star, two star, one star, no star, walk on, preferred walk on, given a scholarship after he proves himself and wins you a national championship as he's doing so, Stetson Bennett. Yes, that is he, everybody. Here's what that means. Now, you're going to be tempted to hear me say this, and you're going to be tempted to say, Clint, you're, you're, you're making excuses for people who can't recruit. That's what I'm doing. Clint, this sounds a lot like uh, recruiting under Mark Rick. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a caveat because recruiting is not a science, y'all. Recruiting is an art. And much like arts in life, there is not a quantifiable, definitive, repeatable outcome. See, now here's here's interesting. And here's what, again, I need you all to understand about recruits and about the star system, about how it works. I'm going to go ahead and let you know some of the highest rated recruits ever at UGA. Okay. The best recruit ever to come to UGA, Justin Fields. Uh, The next best, Nolan Smith. The third best, Trenton Thompson. The next best, Brandon Miller, Keely Ringo, Jacob Eason, Matt Stafford, AJ Green, Isaiah Crowell. Now, if I go down that list, there are some studs on there. Justin Fields, who knows? He didn't win a national championship. Um, Nolan Smith is back for his senior year. He hasn't exploded onto the scene. He's a good player. We love him coming back. We think this is the year he's going to take a step forward. Trenton Thompson decided to declare for the draft, didn't get drafted, didn't get in the NFL, had to do a a practice squad uh, invitation to training camp. Brandon Miller, Jacob Eason, who knows if he's going to have a a longer – it doesn't look like that. It looks like he's not going to go anywhere in the NFL. Uh, AJ Green and Matthew Stafford are clearly all time dogs. They're doing well. Keely Ringo, fantastic player. Uh, obviously, with the chip six. John Tweesport, how y'all doing, by the way? Welcome back to Twitter, my friend. Um, but here's the point that I'm trying to say what you do with recruits in five star, four star, three star, two star, one star is what you're doing is a star rating or the rating, the score, composite score zero to 100. Nobody gets 199.91 or 92 or whatever. Is they are lotto tickets. Okay. There are lotto tickets. Now, if you get a scratcher and one scratcher has five out of 16, five of those little dashes that you get to choose out of the 16 or out of the 20 or whatever, you can go ahead and win a prize. And then you have one that has four and one that has three and then one that has two and one that has one. You're looking at that and it's all about odds. 
It's all about can't which one do I have the best odds of getting? That's a recruit. When you see a five-star kid and we got five stars and I love five stars. When you get four stars, I love four stars. When you get three stars, I love three stars. We're going to talk about a couple of these kids. What it means is that according to evaluations all across the board, this is the best. This is a statistical way, just like deep analytics as it comes to football and explosive plays and yada, 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 yada. We're just talking about pro- possibilities. We're just talking about lotto tickets. When you sign a five-star kid, it does not mean he is the most talented It does not mean he is going to be the most productive. It does not mean he is the best in the class. What it means is all things being equal, this kid has the best lotto ticket of hitting. Now you could scratch five of the 16, five of the 25 or whatever off and get skunked and get nothing. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, this had the best chances. Yeah, it did. And it struck out Trenton Thompson. Or you can get a three star and it hits the jackpot and you win. See, so I'm not suggesting we shouldn't recruit all of these five stars. Please, if we recruited only the five stars, I'd be happy because that means that you have the best percentage chances with the evidence in front of us, evaluation, speed, size, metrics, all of that. But it does not guarantee anything on the field whatsoever. So we're going to talk about a couple of these three-star kids. I'm going to be excited about them. We lost out on a four-star because we prioritized a three-star running back. And many people will say, oh, that's a loss. Oh, a four-star kid goes to Dan Lanning at Oregon. We got a three-star kid coming in. Oh, no. And I'm not going to sit here and try to do the silver lining, rosy red glasses like Florida's doing right now. Florida, how y'all doing today? Oh, you love to see it. You guys suck. Um, I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is I'm going to talk to you about why it's important that these three-star kids are vital because also evaluators suck as well. And they miss out a lot. Again, it's a lotto ticket. It's not a science. It's an art. And we're going to talk about these kids coming back. But first, before we do side, uh, before we do so need to let you know about betonline.net. Betonline.net is your sports book experts. Daniel and I co-host who's usually here. He's on vacation. How y'all doing out there? Uh, Daniel and uh, family enjoy that time. What this betonline.net is for Daniel and I, it's a place for us to go when March Madness comes around, when all college football futures come out, uh, who hit on his um, two times to the window UGA national championship preseason pick, and who's got money to burn come March Madness, this guy. Uh, betonline.net is our place to go. Sportsbook experts, whether you like golf, fantasy, um, uh, games, casino games, um, they even have uh, uh, real-time reality TV show stuff that you can bet on. Props, over under season win totals, head-to-head contests, betonline.net is the place to go. All of our fans love going there, making lots of money with locks in season and out of season. We'll let you know about those locks coming to get you. But you go over right now to betonline.net, our sports book experts, the one day and I trust the most. All right, I want to talk about these couple of kids now. Now that I've given you the frame of reference for recruiting being an art, not a science, and yes, there are scientific measurables you can go ahead and look at. There's a typical linebacker and a typical um, running back size and all of those, but but why it's an art is because of this, and we're going to get to, again, these recruits, and, and some of them don't match the science. Uh, when I was uh, in college, the average NFL linebacker, I think, was 6'4 and, and and 265. I was average NFL linebacker. Now, today's NFL is not six, four and a half, uh, 245, 255. It's not Harrison of the Steelers. That's not the typical NFL linebacker anymore. T- typical NFL linebacker isn't a Kobe Dean, and people could talk about his arm size all day long, but the dude is 225, 230, six foot, six one, five, whatever it is, speedy and quick, the Bobby Wagners of the world. Okay. Um, that That's who. The linebackers are because things change. The science would say, here's it is cut and dry, but it's an art. Art changes. Now let's talk about these kids down here. Uh, Christian Miller, the big name, I think, from today. There's a couple of big names, but the biggest name is Christian Miller. 6'4, 240, 294, uh, top 100 100 defensive line, four star kid uh, here uh, out of the state of Georgia, stays here in state, goes to his uh, his state school UGA the state school not the the it doesn't have state in it I understand but it's the the school that everybody in the state loves or should love 
Uh, Christian Miller goes ahead and signs. Uh, he's the 14th best defensive lineman, ninth in the state, oh, top 100, depending on which recruiting service. And by the way, just FYI, a lot of these recruiting numbers I'm going to give you come out 24-7 sports is what I'm giving you. So give them a shout out and head over to their website, check it out. But Christian Miller comes up, and now we're talking about a huge get on the interior defensive line. We got Bear already in the fold. I'm going to talk about the three-headed monster that we have on the defensive line. But let me all tell you right now that – uh, there is a priority. I know that this cycle, what what hit for us is we had lack of depth on defensive back and Kirby went out and got more guys and we already have guys coming back. We have what I consider the best defensive back group coming back since I've been a fan of UGA to start the season. I don't know if it's going to wind up being the best in season, but to start the season, this is the best group I've ever seen top to bottom. The defensive line, though. Whoo, that defensive line, I'll tell you what right now, it is popping over here because not only did we get Christian Miller, who's a fantastic interior, and he's going to be something that is just, if you watch his tape, he is he is not just a bruiser. He's not just a, a take-up gap guy. He is a disruptor. Again, art, not science. When you look at him, 6'4", 294, you're like, oh, okay, he's just going to be a stopgap guy. Going to go ahead and get in the way of a bunch of people. Nay, nay. Go look. This guy is pushing people back, getting off the ball quick. Short spurt is incredible. He's got great measurables. Georgia kid uh, comes over, uh, late addition to the defensive side. Uh, our defensive side of this ball is is just incredible, this recruiting guy. I like uh, Malachi Starks. Is, I think he's going to be the best of the group, uh, and he's going to play all over the field, it seems like. Um, but Christian Miller has a chance to do something special. Then we got Darius Smith coming in. Uh, Top 150 in the nation, depending on what recruiting service. Four-star kid uh, out of Georgia as well. 6'6", 225. And here's where he lines up. Darius Smith, 6'6", 225. Remember that. Because, because we also have a couple of other edge guys. I don't know if you've heard of these gentlemen who are already in the fold, who have already signed, who, who he joins uh, as well. Um, but uh, Williams, 6'5", 265. The fourth best player in the entire nation. Ooh. Guys, talk about measurables. Talk about science. Talk about speed. Talk about size. All of that. He's got that in droves. Uh, we got... Now, this one's a, an, another four-star kid, not a five-star. But Carlton uh, Maiden, I think, is going to be good. 6'3", 239. He's got a chance to show out quite a bit. What about Marvin Jones? Top 25 again. A lot of recruiting services have him top 15. Six four and a half, two forty five. So now we got three guys who are basically the, the, the same same physical freak types thing. Six four, six four and a half, six five, six, two forty five, two fifty five, two sixty five. Probably when all is said and done, coming off the edge. These guys are athletic. They are strong. They are quick. They are fast. And we got three of them in one class. Top one fifty. If I could take three of the best edge defenders, uh, Marvin Jones Jr. is third best in the position. Um, according to 24 seven. And again, like I said, that's not including uh, Mr. Williams, who is the second at his position at edge. And now we add a third and now we add an interior with bear already. And all of a sudden that defensive line for the next three years is on lockdown. How do you, again, what does Kirby want to do? Kirby wants to win by pressuring. How did we win this last year by pressuring? What happened from the sec championship to the national championship? We pressured Alabama. And Kirby went out, and yes, we got DBs, and we'll talk about them because they they are fantastic. Like I said, Malachi Starks, I think, my goodness, just give me all the stock I can in Starks. I think it's gonna be incredibly special. We got a couple other uh, cornerbacks in the group, five star kids, and a couple linebackers. But when we're talking about getting shutting down the trench, our defensive side of the ball, this recruiting class is exceptional exceptional. I know Texas a and doing some stuff over there. They got some, some guys that can play, but this group, if you gave me Starks and the defensive line and, and that's all I had, I'd be thrilled, but we don't just have that. We have other pieces as well. I'm going to come back, talk about the running backs. Cause I think it's important. We called running back a, a position of need because of the two guys we're losing. We're going to come back. I'm going to talk about the addition, the subtraction of a four star that's going to Oregon, the addition of a three star, and actually why I think it's really, really important we have that kid in the fold now. But first, I want to let you know about Get Upside. Get Upside is an app that you can use right now. Go to the App Store, iOS, or Android Store, put it on your phone, and every time you go to the gas station to fill up, boat, uh, RV, uh, your, your, your tractor, your quad, your snowmobiles, 
uh, for those of us who live in just godforsaken parts of America where snow is piling up everywhere. Go over to Get Upside on the App Store, iOS, or Android. Every time you fill up, use the Get Upside app. Use the promo code SCORE right now, and you're going to get an additional 25 cents off per gallon your first fill up. Normally, Get Upside gives you 25 cents off every gallon that you fill up, but right now, use the promo code SCORE, get an extra 25 cents off. That's 50 cents total. 50 cents off every gallon of gasoline that you fill up with the gets the get upside app with the promo code promo code score 50 cents off every single gallon of gasoline you fill up on your first fill up get upside all right we're now talking we're going to switch over to the offensive side of the ball we're going to talk about running backs and we're going to talk about again art not science lotto tickets not guarantees. Don't be mad when a five-star kid doesn't pan out because the lotto ticket didn't hit, that didn't develop. Some kids take year four. Some kids take year two. Some kids come on and are just Brock Bowers-esque in their first year, like Brock Bowers. But much of the time, these kids have a lot of skill. For whatever reason, they were either late blossoming uh, in high school. They didn't get onto the circuit. They weren't looked at. They were on bad team. Whatever it is, I don't know exactly. But we have two kids that are three stars um, that, that are on the offensive side of the ball that I think are actually big gets, and there's important reasons. Dylan Bell, uh, 6'2", 205, wide receiver out of Texas. He comes on down. He was he was joining the spot today. I think I woke up, and the tweet was already sent, and I think he was just waiting on his phone like for it to hit midnight, and then he tweeted it out that he was signing. He was good. He was all dog all the way. Dylan Bell comes on. A wide receiver, but also Andrew Paul running back 5'11", 220 to pair with already a running back Branson Robinson 5'10", 220 out of Mississippi. Now we get a Texas kid, Mississippi kid coming into Georgia, RBU. This guy says, Andrew Paul, Paul says, if you're a running back and you don't want to come to Georgia, I don't know what's wrong with you. Like this is what this kid brings. Um, Dylan Bell has said similar things, just his love and infatuation for Georgia and what they're bringing to this squad is physicality is incredible talent and a hunger and desire to win. Um, and these kids are three stars, but they show incredible. If you look at the tape of, uh, Andrew Paul, it's much like bear Alexander, bear, bear Alexander, Alexander, and a couple other, uh, kids that we signed earlier. Early on in the recruiting process, they weren't as highly ranked, and all of a sudden they came on late, and the recruiting services bumped them because they saw it. Our coaches are able to see something in these kids, and this is, I'm again, do not hear me, Florida fan, talking about how a three-star is a good – I'm not talking about your team. I'm talking about our team and our coaches, and our coaches have shown a track record of finding, identifying, and training up three-star kids to make them Eric Stokes get them drafted high and watch them ball out. Um, it, it's, it's just incredible to me to see this, to watch this. Uh, Andrew, Paul, Dylan, I, I'm excited for him. The coaches clearly wanted them. We let a four-star go to Oregon and he knew it. And that's why he flipped because we were concentrating our efforts on two basically identical running backs, the style, but also Paul has some, some, some little hip movement to him as he comes through. Branson uh, does as well. They're both incredibly gifted catching the ball, moving uh, in space. But if you look at what is needed, Deshaun Edwards is a, is a baller. I love him. Milton's a baller. Love him as well. Um, but but if you look at kind of a, a, the Nick Chubb ask, everybody's talking about him being this way, and, and don't put that on these kids. Like I know I did earlier, but don't put that on these kids. Nick Chubb's in a stratosphere above everybody else. These cats have the ability to be that again, uh, the Kirby death march, and we need running backs like that, and we got a couple of lotto tickets. I love these pickups. Yes, there's three-star. They're not highly touted. I don't know if they're going to hit the lotto tickets a little less, but I think they came on late in the recruiting cycle. I think our coaches have earned the, the Del McGee status of we're going to trust you on this because they've done it so many times before with so many good, good players that they've developed and they see something and then the recruiting services were late to the party on that's the recruiting news from today uh glad you guys joined us this is locked on bulldogs here on locked on podcast your team every day follow us on twitter subscribe uh, email reach out to us let us know you're talking to us uh, and we will talk to you guys later